My name is Peter Nikolov. I'm Chief Technology Officer for Opsani, and I will tell you about continuous optimization as a service. First, a few words about me. I have been building cloud infrastructure um, from the early days of cloud before it was even called cloud, but I have also used cloud in for many different applications and for many large systems um, at scale. I have co-founded Opsani, where our mission is to improve cloud operations using machine learning. I want to share a war story with you, something from that we were helping a customer uh, complete their digital transformation. So they, a, the customer was a large online event and video conferencing provider. Um, they moved from or their uh, on-prem data center uh, to the cloud. They were fantastic. They finished that in just a few months, um, which is amazing. Um, it was a really happy and successful experience for them. They were a poster child for um, DevOps. Um, their developers were carrying pagers, just operating their services, had really the power to do what they needed and bring features quickly. Um, it also allowed them to expand their market in addition to the larger companies that they, they had as customers moving to cloud allowed them to move to smaller customers where instead of a whole server, they could use a fraction of a server. Um, and that is something that cloud enabled to them, uh, for them. But it did bring in its own problems. And before I go into the problem, I will tell you the answer is 7.5 quintillion. So let's see first, we will return to this, but let's see first what the problem was and, and what, what their experience um, was when, when they were onboarding, especially on the, the smaller accounts. So their developers will build the code for their application. Um, they would deploy it, run through um, the different environments following best practices. And then once they put it in production, um, they would notice performance lags. They were they needed to be able to share um, the same node between multiple customers having um, different amount of resources, um, but sufficient to, to be able to operate. So of course they did the, the thing that everybody does. Um, they started monitoring real, um, real user performance. Uh, they started building load generators, synthetic load generators, and they started using uh, complicated ATM tools that were able to get high visibility into the performance of the application. And with very significant amount of uh, work to understand why the performance is what it is and, and try to tune it. Of course, that takes a long time. So in the meantime, the solution is over provision. Give it more resources. Hopefully that you will get enough performance. And, and you do by, by putting a lot more resources than what your application needs, the, the, you were able to, to, to get that higher performance. And then with more kind of in-depth analysis of the data, things that were taking pretty much six to eight weeks uh, at a time, they were able to feed back into the testing process uh, more details as well as to, to development, um, which on the surface sounds good, um, but when you realize that one of the challenge, one of the benefits of cloud is moving to, to DevOps and to high velocity, um, they were having releases every week. So if it takes them six weeks to optimize a release, you understand that they are significantly behind uh, on that. So the result was that they ended up over provisioning a lot and then they put a lot of work um, into manually optimizing um, these services and they were always looking back. So this is kind of drive, like driving on the freeway by looking in the rear view mirror. So let's look at an example. How should this work? Or what, what is exactly the problem? We'll use as an example uh, the online boutique. Um, it is a reference application that Google built to demonstrate uh, best practices for microservices and generally help people understand how to use Kubernetes. So this is it's a e-commerce application. It consists of 11 different services um, and you see them uh, here on the diagram um, that work together. And then you, if you want to, and it's a good example of any application that you, probably most applications that you would want to, want to deploy. 
Now, if you want to put this application into production, um, you have to tune it and make sure that you can reach the performance goals and, and work with the number of customers that, that you have and you need to be able to handle at the performance you need it. So it is an 11 tier application and um, it comes pre-configured with certain parameters, certain parameter values at their defaults. And if you just deploy it like that, you're probably wasting a lot of resources and you don't know if you're meeting your performance objectives. So when you look at the configuration, what is that configuration? Um, there are two configurations per uh, service. That is the CPU and the memory. And again, that is a very simple case. Most applications have a lot more. Uh, they may have Java, you may have network configuration, kernel parameters and so on. So there may be a lot of other uh, configuration, but let's just focus on these two. Um, there's, even if we decide that there's only eight possible settings for the CPU and for the memory value um, on these 22 different parameters, you end up with 75 quintillion different configurations that, that you may use. And only one of them is the optimal. So what does this mean? Um, 75 quintillion, okay, we have computers, they, they can do that quickly, right? Well, if you compute that, you, you will see that at 100, if you can try 100 different configurations every second, which is hard, you, you have to run a lot in parallel, but say you can do 100 configurations a second, it will take 23 billion years um, to, to complete and to go through the full space. And you really don't have that time because only in 5 billion years, um, the solar system will disappear. Um, and your business has even less time than that because your development team releases a new version every week. So you really don't have um, that long. So what we did um, is we connected the online boutique to our continuous optimization service and decided to see what the actual tuning should be for running it in production. And the results were that we were able to trim costs to 79% um, or reduce cost by 79%. And we were able to increase throughput more than 2x. The resulting efficiency was an increase of over eight times on the number of transactions that it could do per dollar. Now, the most interesting part here, so first this is by itself is, is amazing. But we were also able to do that with only 20 minutes of setup. One of our solution engineers uh, configured it and connected it to our optimizer. Um, and it took about two days to tune and, and get this, this result. And here we will show the dashboard. Show you what our continuous optimization looks in, like in, in our um, product. So this is the, the application that we, are, we have optimized, the Google um, Online Boutique. And then if you look at the configuration, these are all the 22 different parameters, CPU and memory for each of the um, microservices. And you can see what their original values are as they, were, they came from the manifest from, from GitHub. So as our system went through uh, a number of steps, it find an optimal value uh, or optimal set of values. So it found the exact Goldilocks configuration that is exactly um, perfect with respect to meeting the performance objectives and um, not over provisioning, not adding too much resources. Um, and then you can see the results uh, in improved performance, um, reduced significantly reduced cost um, and then the efficiency in the performance cost ratio efficiency is improved. Coming back to our presentation, um, once you have continuous optimization as a service, how does this change the process? How does this improve um, the picture that I showed you earlier? Well, by adding continuous optimization um, in production, then you have real time autonomous changes to the configuration and tuning of those configuration to match um, the, the current load and the current application behavior. 
and that is the the core this is the first um thing because that works immediately that works on your production system and it is working at the moment it adapts to to the current circumstances if you like you can also use that in your pre-code environment or in performance test environments to shift left the performance tuning and experience see how this works even in, in development so this allows you to, to start working with um, performance even earlier so the result of this of having autonomous workload tuning is that you have higher performance lower costs um, and actually what we have observed is also better stability so what is continuous optimization as a service and where can it be applied? It can work on a single application. You can attach it to one service. If you have just, you have one SaaS application and that's, that's your main uh, app, you can attach it to that. Or if you're a larger company, you have a, a service delivery platform where all of your applications or the development groups um, run their applications on that platform. You can attach it to the platform as a whole and work with all services. So it scales to thousands of services and that, that process is autonomous. It, it onboards all the applications um, that it finds on the platform. Um, and then what the, the tuning that, that happens, happens continuously. It happens every time when there's a new code release. Um, there it, it happens when the load profile changes, you have different customers or different mix of, of requests are coming. Or if you have an infrastructure upgrade, let's say you use new um, machine types, different cloud provider, different third party libraries. These are all things that can significantly impact the performance of your application and how it behaves and the resource use that, that it has. Um, so every on each of these changes, optimization can be performed and it will tune it to the specific circumstances. And then the, the value that it delivers uh, continuously is the higher performance, better performance, um, more stable, um, improved availability of the application um, and lower cost. So the result of, of this is and you have probably seen this in your own projects is that manual workload tuning just doesn't work anymore. Not at these speeds, not at the, the sizes of projects that, that we have. Uh, we have weekly or even daily releases. So the, the, the frequency is, is so high. Um, the our applications are running on multiple different platforms and have um, immense variations of different configuration, different configuration settings many tunable parameters, many things that affect the performance and the cost. Um, so combining all of these things, if you try to do this with manual tuning um, or, or not tune, then you can only work reactively um, to improve performance. Um, it, it is really hard to get to good results and know that you are actually not spending too much money. So I hope I was able to show you that manual workload tuning in today's environment is just impractical. Our systems and my applications change too often. Um, they run on a variety of different platforms and have very complicated configurations. The result is that you can see massive waste of resources, poor performance, and as a result, also lower availability. With continuous optimization um, as a service, you can outperform um, your competitors because your applications are always tuned. Um, you can outsmart them because your developers are spending more time building features instead of tuning and, and doing trial and error uh, adjustments. And you can obviously outlast them because you have to, to use your resources more efficiently. If you want to see how to use machine learning um, to tune and, and run continuous optimization for your applications, please come to see us and our team at our booth. Thank you.